Hello and welcome to We On Live broadcast from Washington, D.C. I'm Simon Marks and these are the top headlines of this Monday. Russia claims that it would be risky for Ukraine to continue exporting grain via the Black Sea after the Kremlin suspended its participation in a UN-brokered deal to facilitate shipments. Eurozone economic growth fell to 0.2% in the third quarter as inflation hit another record high on the back of soaring energy prices. Iran says it will put about a thousand people on public trial in Tehran over unrest as authorities step up efforts to crush the protests ignited by 22-year-old Masa Amini's death in custody. Rescuers in the Philippines wade through thigh-high mud to search for bodies buried in a landslide as the death toll from a powerful storm rises to 101. And Swedish climate change activist Greta Thunberg says she will skip next month's COP27 summit in Egypt, slamming the global conference as a forum for greenwashing. As America enters the last full week of campaigning in the midterm elections, political tensions here have been further fueled by Friday's violent attack against the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The government has distributed a bulletin to law enforcement agencies from coast to coast warning of possible incidents of violent extremism. That bulletin distributed just hours after news of the assault on Paul Pelosi broke, the U.S. government warning of a heightened threat of domestic violent extremism against candidates and election workers driven by individuals with ideological grievances. According to reports, the man accused of attacking the husband of Nancy Pelosi carried zip ties with him when he broke into the couple's San Francisco home. The Speaker of the House of Representatives was never in any danger. She was safely here in Washington, D.C., but the assailant is accused of the attempted homicide of her 82-year-old husband, allegedly striking Paul Pelosi with a hammer while shouting, Where is Nancy? Mr. Pelosi was able to alert the authorities by using a telephone that was charging in his bathroom. Some reports say that the suspect also had a list of people that he intended to target. In a separate incident, a man from Pennsylvania pleaded guilty to making multiple death threats on the phone against an unnamed member of Congress. In Arizona, there have been multiple reports of masked individuals with firearms staking out ballot drop boxes, claiming they are monitoring the sites for election fraud. These reports come at a time when there is still everything to play for in America's midterm election campaign. For more on this, we're joined now by Weon's North America correspondent, Susan Terrani, live for us today uh, in New York. Susan, that attack on Paul Pelosi uh, suddenly led to a bit of a change in the conversation on the campaign trail over the weekend, at least as far as prominent Democrats were concerned as they uh, hit that campaign trail. Yeah, for the most part, it was uh, criticized and condemned 
on both sides of the aisle considering the fact that you know it's really a tense situation right now moving on uh, and getting closer to the midterm elections and you know this attacker's profile really fits in a mentally ill individual uh, alienated from society uh, you know he didn't have any clothes on he was in his underwear and uh, he just went down an internet rabbit hole as far as we know and uh, down a conspiracy theory websites and some of them happen to be political and he got access to Nancy Pelosi's home which is very dangerous there was a spat between um, you know Elon Musk and Hillary Clinton about conspiracy theories and I think that the Democrats really honed in on the fact that it, it you know the blame game on whose fault this was that this individual was in a Pelosi's home and, and it's not clear whether or not you know that would really send the right message right now I think um, what many on both sides of the aisle on Capitol Hill are hoping is that the temperature is lowered at this point um, and is brought down the political rhetoric is brought down uh, so that individuals like this mentally ill individual um, you know don't take advantage of it and unfortunately there will be people as we get closer to the election uh, not only 22 but 2024 that they're going to think that it's only one election cycle that will change the course of the country and a small d democracy is really you know in short supply right now But Susan, truth is on the ballot in these midterm elections, isn't it? I see there's a uh, survey conducted by the Brookings Institution that shows that more than 300 candidates across the country have embraced Donald Trump's entirely false claim that the 2020 presidential election was rigged. Uh, and 60% uh, of Americans uh, going into their polling station to cast their ballots in these elections uh, a week tomorrow will find at least one Republican candidate on the ballot uh, who also has questioned the legitimacy of the 2020 presidential election. There's not very much uh, taking place in these midterm elections to suggest that America has stepped back from the edge of an abyss as far as the health of its democracy is concerned. Yeah, no, not at all, considering the fact that if you see, look on the other side of the aisle, lo and behold, on Twitter, Hillary Clinton appeared out of nowhere uh, and said, when no one asked, said that 2024 is going to be stolen by right-wing extremists. Uh, and, you know, uh, many on the right believe that um, the, the Democrats somehow with quote-unquote ballast harvesting are going to be trying to uh, rig the elections to the favor of themselves. Really, uh, as I mentioned, small d democracy is on the ballot. As you mentioned, truth is on the ballot as well. Both sides of the aisle really don't have confidence like they should going into this uh, election and paddling things on the Democrat side, like, you know, Georgian elections is a Jim Crow 2.0, like President Biden uh, had mentioned, when there is really an unprecedented outcome at the polls, or Hillary Clinton saying that, for example, 2024 is going to be a, a stolen uh, by right wing extremists when we're not there, but then Donald Trump also going and saying that 2020 was um, stolen. You know, both sides really none of this really helps in quote unquote lowering the temperature and unfortunately these individuals having the microphone and being the voices uh, that they are then you know it's no surprise that we see mentally ill individuals like the one in nancy pelosi's home eight days to go susan terrani will continue uh, charting the course of America's midterm elections for us. She's Weon's U.S. correspondent live for us today in New York City. Now, several blasts rocked the Ukrainian capital Kiev in the early hours of Monday. According to reports, at least five explosions struck the city this morning. Following the attack, the mayor of Kiev says an area of the city is without electricity and some areas are without water supplies following the Russian strikes. 
Ukrainian officials also added that Russian forces pounded energy facilities across the country with missiles. That's caused blackouts and the uh, cutting off of water supplies in some regions outside Kiev. All of this comes after Russia said 16 Ukrainian drones attacked the fleet in the Black Sea in the annexed Crimean Peninsula. According to Russia's defense ministry, the drones used to attack the vessels were equipped with Canadian-made parts that are used in navigation systems. Russia also pulled out of the landmark agreement that allowed vital grain shipments via a maritime safety corridor. The July deal that unlocked grain exports is critical to easing the global food crisis threatened by the conflict. The deal was brokered by Turkey and the United Nations. And now Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says his country will continue its efforts for the Black Sea grain export deal to remain in force despite the Russian withdrawal. By helping to establish a joint mechanism in Istanbul, we reduce the food crisis by putting 9.3 tons of Ukrainian grain at the world's disposal. Even if Russia behaves hesitantly because it didn't receive the same benefits, we will continue decisively our efforts to serve humanity. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of Czechs rallied in Prague's main square against rising populism and extremism. Many in the crowd voiced support for Ukraine in its war against Russia. The demonstrations which took place here a few days ago show that there is some kind of fifth column from Russia which prepares some kind of regime change and we are concerned about this. That's why we came here to protest against it. An Australian Air Force base in the country's Northern Territory will now have space for up to six nuclear-capable B-52 bombers. It's part of a U.S.-funded project. Officials in Canberra have confirmed that the U.S.-funded aircraft parking apron, which is currently in its design phase, would be capable of accommodating up to six of the B-52s at the Tyndall Air Base. Officials said the U.S. bomber aircraft had been visiting Australia since the early 1980s and conducting training in Australia since 2005. But the detailed plans, first reported by Australian broadcaster ABC on Monday, suggest the new Labour government has locked in plans to expand U.S. aircraft visits to the country. The B-52 is a long-range heavy bomber. It can carry out ocean surveillance and anti-ship operations. It can also carry nuclear or precision-guided conventional warheads. Reports suggest the Pentagon has budgeted $14.4 million for squadron operations and maintenance at, at the Tyndall base. But the move is likely to fuel tensions with China. Experts say putting B-52s, which have a combat range of about 14,000 kilometers, in Australia will be seen as threatening by China as fears grow about a potential assault on Taiwan by Beijing. The US Air Force reportedly said that the ability to deploy long-range bombers to Australia sends a strong message to adversaries. Reacting to the development, the Chinese Foreign Ministry said defense and security cooperation between countries should not target third parties. It added that the relevant practices of the U.S. side have increased tensions in the region, seriously undermining regional peace and stability. And it warned that it may trigger an arms race in the region. The two men whose convictions for the assassination of Malcolm X were overturned last year are set to receive $36 million from the city and state of New York. The two men, Mohammed Aziz and Khalil Islam, always maintained that they did not commit the murder. 
more than half a century after being wrongly blamed in the case, Aziz sought $40 million in damages after serving about two decades in prison. Islam died in 2009 at the age of 74, but also spent more than 20 years in jail and was exonerated in November of last year. They were both released in the mid-1980s, but it was not until last year that their names were fully cleared by the New York State Supreme Court. For more than half a century, the official record stated that three members of the black nationalist group The Nation of Islam shot the 39-year-old leader when he arrived to speak at the podium of a Harlem ballroom. Workers from a manufacturing facility in China's Zhengzhou have been pictured leaving the city in a bid to avoid tightening COVID-19 curbs in the country. Many are travelling on foot after employees were asked to quarantine in the Foxconn facility due to an outbreak. These videos reportedly show Foxconn workers jumping over fencing and carrying their personal belongings as they walk down the road. It's unclear whether the workers were allowed to leave or they simply escaped. It comes after reports that Foxconn placed its employees under quarantine. According to reports, COVID woes could now hit up to 30% of iPhone shipments from the plant this month alone. Meanwhile, volunteers from nearby villages placed food and drinks on the roadway for the fleeing workers. The Foxconn facility can accommodate up to 350,000 employees. The number of workers who have left is not known. The number of people who were asked to quarantine is also unclear. According to local media, Foxconn workers have been complaining of poor food quality. They also said that the company did not provide adequate medical care for those who tested COVID-19 positive. Meanwhile, Foxconn denied rumours that over 20,000 people were infected at the facility. Amidst heated external political climate and COVID-19 restrictions, the economy of Hong Kong has taken a steep downturn. Uh, the economy contracted 4.5 percent in the third quarter, which is the worst contraction in Hong Kong since 2020 and the third straight quarter of GDP, GDP contraction there. GDP dropped amid interest rate hikes and border disruptions. Exports are still pressured this year by global headwinds. The outcome was far worse than expected and is the lowest since the second quarter of 2020 when GDP in Hong Kong shrank by 9.4 percent. The city's economy has been under strain due to the global slowdown and trade disruptions with China. The situation could worsen even further with fears that housing prices in Hong Kong will fall. Hong Kong's economy shrank by 4 percent in the first quarter and another 1.3 percent in Q2. The new owner of Twitter, Elon Musk, says he's looking at additional revenue streams for the social media giant, with reports that he's planning to charge around 20 US dollars a month for Twitter users who want to remain verified. Employees working on the project were reportedly told they need to meet a deadline of November the 7th to launch the feature, or Musk has also been raising the issue of the number of bots on the website. He started raising concerns about that months even before his $44 billion acquisition was completed. However, reports add that the CEO of Tesla has not made a final decision and the project could still be scrapped. Twitter blew. It offers exclusive access to premium features on a monthly subscription basis. And that also includes a feature that allows users to edit their tweets.
After five straight defeats, the Los Angeles Lakers finally got their first win of the season. LeBron James led the record 17-time champions to a 121 to 110 point win over the Denver Nuggets. The Lakers entered the game in LA as the only team in the league yet to get off the mark this season. Last week, the Nuggets beat the Lakers after a dominant third quarter performance. The Nuggets started well once again before the Lakers bounced back in the second quarter. The hosts entered the third with a four-point lead, but the Nuggets rallied and found themselves eight points up with four minutes remaining in the final period. However, the Lakers then turned the game on its head with an 18-2 run that essentially sealed the win. LeBron James finished with a game-high 26 points, while Anthony Davis added 23. Nine-time All-Star Russell Westbrook, who has been heavily criticised this season, also had 18 points. The victory is also the first for new head coach Darwin Ham. He took over from Frank Vogel during the summer. Well, the Nuggets just about out of time as Westbrook lays it in. Well, as mentioned, air ball three, air ball three, turnover. Known for the Salem Witch Trials, the city of Salem in Massachusetts has earned a spot as America's Halloween capital. And each year it hosts a month-long spree replete with the most frightening costumes, decorations, ghoul parades and theatrical seances. This year Salem witnessed record-breaking crowds recording over 100,000 visitors each day. Well, if you're celebrating Halloween, whoever you're going as, I hope you have a very good time tonight. We've got the candy all ready here for the door knockers. Uh, I'll be back uh, tomorrow with another edition of We On Live broadcast. Same time, same place. I hope to see you then. Until then, stay tuned for all of your news updates, of course, to We On. World is one. There are many other... Uh, is this your break? Uh, I don't...